I just had two week trip to Iceland and photograph 20 waterfalls there. So today let me share with you some pro tips to help you photograph waterfalls like a landscape photography expert. Let's get started. First, gear essentials. A DSLR or a mirrorless camera with manual mode gives you the highest chance to photograph waterfalls like a pro. I know some of you might argue you can even use smartphones these days for long exposures to photograph waterfalls. Well, let's assume you want to produce high quality waterfall images like a pro, not just a snapshot by chance. Apart from the camera and lens, a sturdy tripod will sure help you stabilize your camera during long exposure. For those of you who are very keen on lightweight gear and are not sure of bringing a big and bulky tripod just for some random trials and errors of waterfall images in your next trip, check out this video where I've shared lightweight mini tripod for waterfall or hikes. Well, I do want to warn you, it might work in nice weather, but for high wind scenarios like Iceland, it might be challenging. You might want to ask if you need to have a remote shutter release. Well, it's optional. For most DSLR and mirrorless cameras, it comes with delayed shutter for two seconds, five seconds, or 10 seconds. It came with the camera directly. You really don't need additional remote shutter. Next, let's talk about filters. A neutral density filter or ND filter is a must, at least it's for me. I use ND filters for all my waterfall images. The benefit is it allows you to slow down your shutter and do long exposure even in bright daylight. Depending on the light scenario, sometimes you just need to use mild ND filters such as my Nisi variable one to five ND filter. And then for scenarios that you want to slow down your shutter significantly or in bright daylight, you might need to consider a 10 stop ND filter. Sometimes you might get by without using any filters, but you are limited to fast shutter speed that will not get you the silky, smooth waterfall effect that you see from lots of the pro landscape photographer waterfall images. A polarizing filter can reduce glare on water surface and enhance colors, but I stopped using it many years ago for some side effects when using wide angle lens and sometimes the bending in the sky. I'll share with you a link down below a blog post I wrote 10 years ago about the negative side effects of polarizing filters. Check it out if you're interested. If you're interested in the camera gear I typically bring on a trip, not only photographing people, but also landscape, check out this video where I've shared not only what I bring, but also why I bring certain camera equipment and accessories. But if you're on a hunt on a mirrorless camera or have been using a DSLR for a while, but are not sure if you should upgrade your camera gear, check out my free video guide of mirrorless camera ultimate buying guide Hopefully it will save you hours, days, or even weeks of research time and find out what are the camera gear and features that matter most important to you. And most importantly, how to make a logic purchase decision for your next camera gear. Tip number two, composition and framing. When framing your shop, consider if you want to do horizontal versus vertical, if you want to put your waterfall off center or right in the middle, if you want to photograph from the front or from the side. It depends. There are no right or wrong answers, but I'll tell you there are always a slightly better composition than others for a specific waterfall. Depending on the background, the surrounding environment, the light scenarios. The best way to find out which one is better is to simply experiment with different angles and perspectives. Get low to the ground or get to a high vantage point. Get closer or walk far away and shoot from a distance. Add foreground elements such as rocks, vegetations to increase depth and interest to your photo. I've recently shared my top composition tips to take travel photos. Lots of them can be applied to waterfall images as well. I'll leave you a link right here and in the description box down below. Make sure to check it out if you haven't yet. 
do not blindly follow textbook composition tips such as rule of third or leading lines if you don't really understand what that means because the world is far more dynamic than textbook jargons. Tip number three, let's dive into camera settings. Many of you might have heard tips to use shutter priority on your camera to photograph waterfalls. You know what? That's not my practice. I never use that these days. To me, I either use aperture priority or manual mode. Why? I want to decide the depth of field, which means how much of my photo content will be in focus in my frame instead of having the camera automatically decide that in the shutter priority mode. For my waterfall and landscape photos, I use a pretty small aperture, meaning high f-stop, uh, at least f8. Actually, I would say 80% of the time or more, I use f13 or f16 or even higher, especially for images with deeper depth of field. Typically, I set my ISO to 100, possibly 200, 400, 800 in low light conditions, but rarely beyond that. This is particularly important when you use ND filters. You have darkened the light to force a long exposure. You definitely don't want to use auto ISO, which could cause the camera to automatically crank up ISO instead of forcing a long exposure. What is the best shutter speed? There is no right or wrong answers. But over the years after photographing many waterfalls, I find a sweet spot somewhere between 0.3 to 5 seconds. For big and powerful waterfalls, you don't want to use too long exposure or the waterfalls will look like a white blanket. But for small or trickling waterfalls, any longer exposure wouldn't make any difference as you can't make a waterfall bigger or fatter by increasing the shutter speed. Now for medium sized waterfalls, that's when the trials and error play an important role. If you want to see more texture in the water, Try to limit your shutter speed within one second. If you want to make it smoother, then use longer shutter speed, but not too long for the above reasons I already mentioned. If you want to have faster shutter speed, you can do one or several of the followings. Increase aperture, reduce filter intensity, or increase ISO. If you want to have slower shutter speed, you can do one or several of the followings. Increase filter intensity, decrease aperture, or decrease ISO. In terms of what combination you want to dial, it's totally personal choice and by trials and errors. On the other hand, if you want to freeze the motion of the water, you might want to use extremely high shutter speed such as one thousandth of a second or even faster. You might need to open up your aperture or increase ISO in order to achieve that kind of shutter speed. Now, this has to be done correctly to balance your composition. As I mentioned before, for deeper depth of field, for example, for photos where you have lots of contents with different distance to your camera, you want to use high f-stop or small aperture in order to increase the depth of field. But when you set high f-stop or smaller aperture, you naturally reduce the light coming into your lens or camera, which might affect the shutter speed. You might not be able to achieve very high shutter speed, to freeze the waterfall. How do you balance the shutter speed and aperture? You know what? Even you are the most experienced photographer, you just have to play with trials and errors in different scenarios for different waterfalls. And that's the fun part of photography. There's no straight answers. When you come to a waterfall, you cannot really say, let's just do this. This is the right camera setting. Play around and experiment with different settings and enjoy to find the best result you want. Beyond the basics, the gear, the composition, the camera settings, there are many factors you need to consider to photograph waterfalls successfully.
One crucial tip is safety, of course. Waterfalls can be slippery and predictable. Wear comfortable but sturdy shoes. Watch your steps and be mindful of your surroundings. Some waterfalls could easily splash waters on your gear. You need to be not only quick setting up your gear, but wipe your lens or filters constantly. Make sure to protect your gear. One of the biggest challenges in Iceland is high wind. That's why a sturdy tripod is extremely important, as I mentioned in the beginning. In some conditions, when I photograph waterfalls on the edge of a cliff in high wind, I literally have to be extremely careful, not only to set the tripod in the correct way, but also to even secure the camera strap or sometimes even take off the camera strap and in extreme conditions, you might even need to hand some heavy bags in the bottom of your tripod to secure the tripod. And basically you want it to avoid the camera shake when you do long exposure for waterfall photography. If your photo include plants, vegetation, which is very likely because waterfall is in the nature, you need to constantly check the result of your photo because in high wind conditions, the trees, the leaves, the grass could look blurry, which means you can have the rest of your image in a messy, blurry situation. The only nice part is the waterfall. How do you balance? Make sure that everything looks nice, not just the waterfall. You might have to be mindful of the seasons. Sometimes the waterfalls could be frozen, especially in Iceland. I'm not just talking about winter. It could be spring or fall in the rest part of the world, but the waterfalls are still frozen in Iceland, right? That's why I went there this June in the summer to photograph the waterfalls that I had photographed 10 years ago because those are the frozen images I got this summer. I finally got the water. If you are in the dry season, some waterfalls could be smaller than you expected. You checked on social media. Wow, this waterfall is so beautiful. But when you show up, the waterfall is so small. Well, maybe you need to plan ahead and pick the best season. Last but not least, choose the right time. The golden hours or even blue hours during sunrise sunset could be your best bet. Look at these two waterfall images they are the same waterfall, by the way. One is taken during the golden hours. The other was taken in the second morning. Which one is better? Obviously, they are very different, right? But they are the same waterfall. Sometimes it's too crowded. You can't even use tripod or have space for tripod. The best solution is to go in the morning or evening to avoid the crowd. Well, another thing I wanted to point out in the summer in Iceland, in June, July, you could get midnight sun and seven hours, of golden hours, which is the charm for landscape photographers. This waterfall was actually photographed during midnight, but it's golden hours. This is why you want to go to Iceland in the summer. Finally, let's talk about post-processing. If you shoot in RAW like me, you might want to use software such as Adobe Lightroom to enhance your photos, bring out the colors, contrast, texture. When your photos are done right in the camera, post-processing should be fast and easy. My principle is to always get the photos right first in the camera. Post-processing is to help me to enhance an already good photo instead of fixing bad photos. And there you have it. With the right gear, composition, settings, and techniques, you are on your way to capturing breathtaking waterfall images. If you find these tips helpful, please like and subscribe, and I will see you in my future videos and share with you more photography tips and tutorials.